see this at the team. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Chart Talk 88 coming at you. We got the uh, first remnants of summer trading coming in. Let me tell you, it has been a snooze fest. So let's go right into, right into the market outlook. I mean, here's the S&P. Over the last six days, we've traded in a 1.5% range. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, because the summer was so live last year with everyone kind of stuck inside, there were so many retail traders, there's so much money flying around. I'm hoping we don't, you know, have the backlash of the opposite effects of that this year where everyone's so excited to be outside, no one really cares about the market, and we're seeing the slow, slow summer trading, you know, kicking off like I've never seen it kick, kick off before. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Right now, I mean, from, from a uh, price action standpoint, what the market's done over the last six days is great. So it held this major support level here. In the, I'm looking at the S&P, the SPY, held this major support level last year, uh, last week when we were selling off. It's bounced, now it's up near highs again. Right now we're going sideways. Um, this is technically very healthy. The more sideways we get, the better for you know long-term uh, gains. But again, it's been really slow at, at these levels. We're retesting highs, we could pull back. Uh, you know, I, I have no major, major opinions right now about the market, it's just been so slow. Uh, what are you thinking over there? Yeah, so same thing again. We, we retest that prior high in the SPY. Again, what, what tends to happen when we retest prior highs, we, we get met with some sells, which we saw today. We're in this 5% range, and I think it was funny. I was reading your newsletter last night, and both of ours kind of had the same message where it's like, it's summer trading's beginning, you know, things, volume will be light, trading will be slow, like just be patient and, and don't try to kind of overextend yourself. And we kind of had both a similar take on, yeah. you know, kind of summer I mean, trading. I mean, I'm hoping it's just because it's, a, the, you know, the first Memorial Day weekend, things like that, and, and it won't be this bad all summer, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, only thing sector wise, other than that, it was healthcare. But again, it's up through. I, I put a chart. Yeah. Excellent. Pull that email. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, I got it. VHT. Yeah, so, yeah. So VHT again, just flying all time highs again today. Bearish and golfing is not the best sign for today, but in time through two forty three that all time highs, it looks pretty solid. So that's one sector to keep an eye on. Um, so if you want, should we jump to some of the top ideas? Let's jump on in. All right, so the first one we got this, I took a few off the, off the shakedown. So the first one is this TSE. Oh uh, yeah, I like this one still. I mean, <clears throat> this is kind of a, you know, it, it's an industrial company. We're seeing the, uh, the reopening stocks get that love again. A lot of these industrials look really good. This looks good from a long-term or a macro standpoint. You know, it could break this, what, 70 area. Uh, but again, if you bought it today, you need to give it down to that 62. So it's still a little wide, but uh, definitely a great chart pattern. All right, next we have this VVI. VVI. Um, this one looks good. It started to break today. Mm -mm -mm. Problem, it's a very thin name, so it's it's pretty tough to trade. But, uh, you know, from a technical standpoint, it looks pretty good. If you're in it already, I wouldn't buy this one yet. I would wait for another flag, but we'll continue to watch it. Now, what about this VAC? Marriott. Oh, nice. Vacations. Yeah, I like this one a lot. But again, uh, it's so slow, man. Jeez, 174 to 175.50 today. Tight ass range. So, you know, you'd have to give it down to this 168 pivot, but again, through this 176, 177 area, it looks like it could trigger. Again, really nice chart pattern here. Marriott, reopening name. Um, this is definitely where you want to gravitate your energy right now. Uh, so, it looks pretty good. All right, next we have this LANC, Lancaster Colony. Yeah, and if you look at this one on a monthly chart, uh, you can tell it's one really big flag on the monthly. That's, that, that's the attractive part about it. And then you look on the daily chart, it's got this nice little flag in front of this you know, 190 area. So it looks pretty good, but again, a very choppy name. We're not gonna see this one explode for a 10% day anytime soon. This is more of a grinder. So you gotta you know, give it to the proper out and things like that. But uh, it looks good. Again, not overly excited about any of these subs really. Mm -hmm. Next one is WAFD, Washington Federal. Exactly, a, a, a savings bank. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, again, very nice chart pattern. This is where the money's going right now. You can't fight fight the money in the market. So, you know, through this 34, I'll be very interested. But, you know, as interested as, as I can be. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got two more. We have this GPN. Uh, uh, uh. If it can hold, yeah, if, it, if it can hold this 200-day simple moving average right here, this is huge, huge support. So if it's able to bounce higher off this area, it looks good. But uh, with today's action, it doesn't look good just yet. Uh, may need some more time. See what it does with this 200 day. All right. And last one off the shakedown is this FRME, another another regional bank. Right. Yeah. Um, 
Again, great, great chart pattern. Beautiful flag at highs. You know, chart looks amazing. Um, where you know you just got to you got to grind these names out. These are true swing trades that, that should take weeks if if they're right. Mm -hmm. All right. So Adam Ricky had three setups. He asked to go over the first one was this Skechers SKX. Yeah. He's looking at it up through this forty eight area versus the low versus that forty five. Right. So we were originally looking at the Skechers right up here um, in early May when it was kind of holding this earnings gap. Market took it down. So it's since you know filled that gap pretty perfectly. And now, you know, it looks pretty decent in front of the 48 area. So we look on the daily, it looks pretty good. We look on the hourly chart, uh, don't mind all these moving averages, but, uh, you know, through the 48, we like seeing dailies and, and hourlies uh, match up. Time frame continuity there. So looks pretty good through 48. Doesn't look amazing, I'd say. You know, if you need to put your money somewhere through 48, that looks like a decent spot. Nothing special, though. Mm -hmm. Next, we have this Papa John's, PZZA. He's looking at this up through 96 versus this little pivot low versus 92. And I saw Papa John's bring stuffed crust pizza back, so Catalyst Central. Where's he looking at this one? Um, it was uh, up through 96 versus 92. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Check out a weekly chart. Yeah, it looks pretty good against this area right here. You know, it, it looks okay, but again, these are far from A-plus setups. It's like, you know, reaching for setups at this point. Yeah, and a sector we haven't talked about in probably years is airlines. He's looking at this LUV um, up through 62 versus that pivot low versus like 58. 58, yeah. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. Uh, I was looking at another one. What is it? This was it Sky X? Uh, Sky, Sky W. Um, the Sky W I was looking at on the shakedown speed of airlines. This 50, 51 area triggered pretty much today, uh, that little break of downtrend. So we're seeing the airlines come back. It's all about the reopening stocks still, which aren't always the funnest names, but that's what we're dealing with right now. So through that 62, 50 area, looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, then I have two quick ones that are setting up. Shake, you're gonna pull up the charts. First one is this IT. Bit... IT, huh? Damn. Yeah, so we got a tight little earnings flag, very tight. You know, what is this, six, seven little inside days. Um, looking to buy up through this 235 versus 230 and risking, you know, one and a half, two percent in a name basically flagging your all time highs. Right. And the important part about this setup where, you know, novice, uh, you know, novice traders wouldn't realize they look at this chart and they say it's overbought. But we look at this earnings gap and we look to the weekly chart and it's just really a huge flagpole in the weekly. So that, that, that mm. makes the setup really attractive. The tight consolidation on daily at highs, really tight risk entry. That one looks really good. That's the best chart we've looked at by far. Yeah. So again, technically, you'd really want to give it verse 220, but again, for how tight it's been, we want to see that momentum up through 235. So right. I will be much tighter with this, given you know the tight setup. And the other one is this Anthem. You know, same kind of similar story minus the gap up. We just have this tight, you know, flag in this you know 10 point range in a four hundred dollar stock. So again, you're risking you know two three percent in a you know stock that's basically the highest it's ever been. Looking to buy it up through 400 verse 388. Um, so both kind of same setup, just very tight risk, you know, ideas that I'm looking at. Yeah. All right. So with that, if you want to go into any good and bad trades for the week. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, you know, this is really the only thing I've done is this Roblox. We went really hard at it. You know, I did, we did really, really well with this one through the 78. We were going crazy about the setup. Like this is, I had some serious conviction, put some real risk on, and we did really, really well with this one. The unfortunate part about when names do this, when they go straight up. You know, I had to dump such a such a large amount of my stock in this 90 area because it went 75 to 90 in two days. You know, what mm -hmm. do you do? You have to either expect a pullback and hold on to that huge amount of stock. Or, you know, what I did was I lightened the load so I can still be in it as, it, you know, now it's trying to get through 100 at this point. So that one looked really good. And then the bad trade was, what was that? I was short the Qs. This was, uh, where would I get short? So I got short the end of the day, uh, 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 this day right here. We just saw so much weakness. I had a great price, and and really, I'm not looking to short this, you know, for a market collapse or anything. It was more of a hedge against my longs. So in that regard, it wasn't too bad of a trade. But you know, I was up obviously the most I was in the trade at the open, and then I just saw this position go against me the entire day, and I ended up getting out break even at the end of the day, where you know I should have taken some off right at the open. But again, it's a hedge, so you know that's kind of what you battle with with a hedge. It's like you know. If, if doom and destruction happens, I need to have this position on. So I really don't think I could have done anything differently. It's just always unfortunate to 
you know, see a trade come back the entire day in your face when you were right in the beginning of the day and it just slowly trickles against you. Mm -hmm. But again, hedge, can't be too mad. If, if we do break that area and we go down to 300 in the queues, then, you know, I'm, I'm you know, doing really well on that trade. And that, that's really the point of it. It's to hedge against the long. So, you know, not too mad at it, but, you know, should, should have taken some off at the open. Gotcha. All right. Um, so, sure, you're going to pull the first chart. You have this DHR. This was one I was actually getting a little bummed that I got stepped out of. But again, this was similar with his Abbey. The last, you know, kind of March was focusing on these support buybacks and the ones that were working. We've just tried to hold as long as we can. Uh, this was one where, again, the original pivot, so pivot low one was the original stop. So when we bought up through 220, the original stop was versus like that 210 area. As DHR had that little gap up and started to flag, that was kind of the second area where we could move the stop up versus that 236. And as this stock continues to trade higher, we continue to move that stop up versus that prior pivot, and eventually we're gonna get stopped out. Um, so as we saw here, DHR ran into 260. Technically, you know, I was even looking to buy up through that 260 this week, just you know, not really in the cards now, and got stopped out today, basically, basically the low of the day, um, for about 11 percent gain. So that that's the tricky part, I think, with with giving it versus those power pivots, is that you do give back a significant amount. So like in this name, you know, from you know Friday to today, giving back almost 15 points in the trade. But again, get, you know, just letting it the stock do its work and just trading it versus pivots kept me in the trade probably much longer than if I was trying to sell into into strength on the way up. We've been in a lot. Shake, you want to go over the last one, this snap. I know a lot of the members have been in it. And we've been doing very well buying up off of support. And now we're kind of getting into this zone where snap has been met with some sellers, you know, going back to February, where this kind of 64 to 66 area has been an area where there's been some sellers. And we've been buying up, you know, in this 48 to 54 area. So now as it gets into here, this is now the, you know, almost fifth or sixth time. It's much more has a much higher probability now of getting through this 64 to 66 area than it did in the past, but we don't you know could still get into this area and still be met resistance and that's where there's a you know a few different key spots to have a stop if you wanted to continue to hold this if it wants to continue higher, um, it just depends on your risk tolerance. So those are some three spots: 61, 59, and 56. And again, verse 50 or 48 are much wider areas to give them verse, depending on where you want to trade it. For me personally, I'm looking to hold it at least until the retest of that 73 area before I look to take any profits from the stock that I bought up off of support. So that's all I got for this week, Jake. Anything else you want to add before we get into Book of the Week? <clears throat> nah, you crushed it. Okay, all right. So what do you got for Book of the Week? Uh, let's let you kick it off. What do you got? All right, so I actually have... Yeah, yeah the more I'm details the better because I didn't read. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm finishing uh, The Hour Between Dog and the Wolf. You mentioned this one a few weeks back. Um, you know, the book kind of breaks up half of it, kind of the, you know, technical stuff, you know, trading aspect, and then half of it is kind of like, you know, your emotional system and, you know, your self. It gets like another, almost like the scientific stuff of why people react the way they react. Yeah. Um, good book. I mean, I have a couple pages turned. There was, they had one line which like relates to us at the prop firm where, like when we got hired right before that, they were hiring a bunch of Ivy League traders and they basically fired them all because they were just too smart and they couldn't just handle the, you know, just the random aspects of trading. And they mentioned, you know, they had a, a, a line in here that go, went to the same thing where, you know, just those very smart individuals have a very hard time trading in the markets um, because things are just not perfect when they, you know, in school, when you're at a 4.0, everything you did, you know, two plus two out of four, where in the market, you know, two plus two can be seven on certain days. <laughs> Um, so, worst traders I know, engineers, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or doctors, or, or doctors. Actually, doctors, yeah, doctors are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we wrapped it up. All right, yeah. wrap this thing up. Get out of here on a Tuesday. All right, guys, like, subscribe, all that good jazz. You got any good questions? We do this for y'all. So you know, keep it locked, and we'll see you guys next week.